que se va. Ni un te quiero ni nada. Bueno, vamos a hablar con nuestro amigo Leto. Took you a while. Is that bubble from Sheila's megascope? Mm -hmm. My final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the megascope has a flaw. My <laughs> but just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. I let her escape. You're heartless. You've no idea what the royal witch hunters have in store for her. <laughs> A lot of pain for a long time. Me llama el tío, a mí de esa madre, qué so, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first, vodka. <laughs> I suppose my throat's a little dry. In that case. Let's drink to old friendships. Bien, bien, bien. Borracha los dedos como le mueres. Recovered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember <coughs> when we first met? Yeah, I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back. Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there is no accounting for taste. The winter solstice 1270. Middenvair, the night of magic. Letho wasn't lying when the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Oh. Back with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. I remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. I remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I chased you for lots of reasons. You owe me some explanations to start with. Let's say I do. How did you know where we'd find the Wild Hunt? Every witcher who wears the viper around his neck knows the place. We had so many books and <laughs> scrolls about the hunt. Oh, eh? that I used to think our school was founded for the very purpose of solving the riddle of the Spectral Riders. Know who they are? You know the true identities of the Riders? From what I understand, they're some damn elven race. But they turned out to be a big ruse. The legendary omen of war proved to be a fairground attraction. No Market Square mage could possibly conjure up a cavalcade of wraiths speeding across the sky. Then there's the amnesia. No, there's something more, I assure you. Go ahead, enlighten me. I can tell you one There are a lot of legends and myths about it, but the Wild Hunt is a fact. I've fought and killed many of its wraiths. They were spectral emanations, the avatars of real riders. The riders we ran into by the hanged man's tree. Are you telling me you were carried off by elves? Real material sons of bitches <laughs> like the ordinary kind we deal with in this world? They may be ordinary in their world, but they're strangers in ours. 
The conjunction of spheres. Know the theory? Do you know how monsters appeared in our world? There's not a Witcher who doesn't know that. So you know there are other spheres. The most powerful of our mages can open passages between these worlds, and they usually do that to summon the monsters we then have to hunt. The elves we Lovely. saw come from another world, and they weren't summoned. They found the way on their own. It's not exactly easy, so they usually send their spectral emanations. They come in person on special missions. As they did for you and Yennefer. Mm -hmm. So, elves from another world and their trained wraiths. What did they want from you? <laughs> I've got an idea. But that's not your concern. Care to tell me what it was all about? Hmm. Kill as many rulers as we could. Lay the blame on the sorceresses. Breed chaos. Prepare the north. Soften it before the invasion. <laughs> you know what's incredible? We could not have imagined more fertile soil. No matter what the war's outcome, the northern monarchs will accuse one another. Pursue their God-given rights. Seek vengeance and be at each other's throats for years to come. The north resembles a whorehouse on fire. As your friend Dandelion would say, How do you manage to slay Demavend? Sheila's magic. I mean, she could give us the king's every move. His habits, the positions of the palace guards, anything. All we had to do was navigate the labyrinth and land the final blow. Besides, she had plenty of gold for the preparations. Greased palms abundantly. It had all the makings of a cakewalk. But it's never that easy. We barely avoided our pursuers, and we wouldn't have if not for Yarveth Skyatel, another of Sheila's ideas. With Yarveth's elves, not only did we cut down Demavand, but traveling with them put us out of the lodge's reach. We could calmly plan <coughs> protests and Hensel's assassinations. Why are you still here? Why did you wait for me this time? I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you'd pursue me. And I don't aim to hide anymore. Fact is, only you know the truth about me. Well, and a couple of folks whose word isn't worth spit anymore. I never saw you as a foe. I want to go my way. But if I have to fight you first, so be it. The story ends here and now. How did a Witcher agree to kill humans at another human's bidding? At the Emperor's bidding, Geralt. And he's no ordinary human. The rulers of the North come up to about where his Pauline's end. Why? Simple. He promised to rebuild the School of the Viper. The Witcher's order where I came to be. Witchers' schools in the south fell into ruin long ago. And witchers themselves became internal exiles, banned from entering most cities. Besides Seret and Ox, I know of two other witchers of the School of the Viper who should be alive and on the path. I don't know where they are. Haven't seen them for years. Now they can come out of hiding. They can come home. Tell me about Yennefer. What happened after I departed? She was feverish for several days. Delirious. In agony. <coughs> we thought that was it. She was on her way out. Somehow she recovered. But even then she was disoriented. <laughs> Amnesia like you. What then? Well, the woman turned out to be quite a character. Throwing temper tantrums, trying to seduce orcs, 
trying to drive a wedge between us. After you so nobly sacrificed yourself, we thought it'd be dumb just to leave her somewhere. She wouldn't have survived more than a month. The whims and vigor of a duchess, but she was just a sorceress with no memory. We were in the heart of the Empire. And as I'm sure you know, Geralt, in Nilfgaard, Boy. mages who behave like that either drop oh, their bad habits quickly, <laughs> or are drawn and quartered by horses in the middle of Victory Square. So I heard. So we set out, wandered through the provinces. Everywhere we went, she got in trouble and we pulled her out. And then one day they captured us. The Imperial Police Secret Police. Police. <laughs> Me, Ark, Sarit, and Yennefer. Imperial Secret Police? Mm-hmm. We were separated and they questioned us. Long and thoroughly. But it was uneventful. No violence. That's how I met Vatia de Rideau. And a couple of weeks later, the Emperor himself. Me. A simple witcher. What happened to Yennefer? I don't know. Never saw her again. The Emperor offered me a mission in the Northern Kingdoms. As for Yennefer, I had the feeling she was somehow important to Emir. As I see it, they learned of the Lodge from her. Those Imperial spooks have their ways. All I heard is that Vatier had his men watch Yennefer closely throughout the time she was at the well, palace. Then we went off to slay the kings of the north. And that's where my knowledge ends. So she's in the Empire? She was when I left. Care to tell? No, the. No ma the no Shame you didn't take a shot at Hensel to yourself. History might have taken a <coughs> turn. Maybe I would have killed him. Maybe you would have killed me. Who knows? But Hensel's death, although desirable, wasn't necessary anymore. The plan could go forward without it. Besides, somebody else got him. You know who? Come on. We both know. <laughs> so Sheila was looking for you when she came to Flotsam. Mm-hmm. She thought she was still in control and wanted to get rid of me. I'd bet my eyes that she thought I'd lost my mind, or that Yorveth was manipulating me. And the North descended deeper into chaos. Exactly. There was just one problem. You. I could have killed you in the elven ruins. Thing is, you weren't really my enemy. When did you decide to get rid of Yorveth? As soon as I realized I couldn't manipulate him. A true fox, that one. He was so observant, so dangerous. I got the sense he might see through me at any moment. You made a mistake. You were untouchable as long as the Scoia'tael were protecting you. Maybe, but with Yorveth, my hands were tied. If I'd finished off Kieran, But you didn't. And that allowed me to drive a wedge between you and Yorveth. I forced you to flee. And I let you live. You know I could have killed you. You're forgetting. No, I remember. How did you know Foltest would come to the Monastery's solar? Yorveth and I planned Foltest's murder. The King of Temeria would have to deal with the Lavalette sooner or later, and he made no secret of it. I was sure he'd want to recover his bastard children in the process. And where do they take the children when a castle's under siege? I had to become a monk, but I couldn't just arrive at the Monastery and claim I'd seen the light. Not very believable. So one of Arian's patrols out in the forests happened on a Skyatel unit torturing a helpless monk. <laughs> Arian's brave men drove off the elves and I found shelter in the monastery. No one noticed you had no wounds? 